Hello everyone and welcome to this teardown. This is going to be a teardown of the UT136P Plus via a quite reputable brand, I guess, Unity. This is a 4000 count digital multimeter. Uh, here's the front side. Two buttons up there. The range selector. Transistor tester. And it also seems to mark the position for the scanner or sensor for the this function, this NCV function, the last function. So before we turn it on, I think we should take it apart, maybe. Okay, so we'll do that. But first, here are the probes. Quite cheap. Ain't cheap for you if you are broke. Anyway. Now here's the box. The box actually advertises the Unity 136C plus version. Mine is the P plus version. You see it's a standard. This table represents the information related to the functionality of the device. As you can see, the only difference uh, in the two versions, the B plus and the C plus, is the, the C is somehow you know so just remember it as celsius because it has the temperature functionality the c plus the b plus does not have that but to complement that it has the ncv function uh, i think it just detects those um, main live wires somehow via uh, measuring something maybe the magnetic fields anyway probes on the both side let's take a look at this I am not going to single handedly take off the cover, so yeah. So here it is out of the cover. The cover. This rubber, rubber shielding seems, uh, I don't know, kind of legit, I guess. Uh, I don't know what this part is for the gap. Maybe it has some functionality, who knows. But I like the way this was designed for, you know, keeping the probes. You just roll the wires all the way from the input jacks to all around the body somehow like this. And you roll it and you put the, you know, the probes afterwards. Like, you know, after you've rolled it, you just put the probes here. And you can just store the whole unit like this and throw it around in your backpack and everything. It's good. Let's take it apart. See two screws underneath this jack taken apart, and they are silk tappers, they're just you know damaging the plastic body over time. And here's one for the battery compartment. Yeah. Just like that. You can see the markings or the quality of the plastic injected mold or whatever is quite good actually it's shiny this screw however is metal threaded which is good it's not gonna wear out over time change the battery anyway let's open the device up let's try doing it single-handedly there we go and the bottom part just comes off and look, you have this contacts for the batteries. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, look at all the markings. Well, the thing itself is not bad. It's like the thickness of the wall. And let's now, you know, reveal the main board. Look at that. Well, the input uh, sockets here are not well made. You see, there's a tiny gap over there at that point, and that kind of makes it uh, loose, I guess. The walls are meant to be thick. Look at the walls of this thing. It's quite thick. And it also has this, you know, this this whole thing just 
goes like all the way in there. No, it just goes all the way in there. So there is blast shielding. No. You can see right around the input jacks we have these uh, PTC thermistors maybe. They look good, there are four of them. Mm, I suppose they are for input protection. And you can see the cheap HRC fuses, which do have some sort of a rating on them, if you can see. This one says 500 milliamps, and this must be the 10 amps, because that's how the rating in this case is 10 amps and 400 milliamps, 100 for safekeeping, I guess. Here we can see some sort of a sensor. This is basically that the detector detects main live wires, maybe behind the you know concrete you have in your house. Here's the buzzer, it's a cute buzzer. Here's the main processor with a gunk on it. And this looks like it came from the other side. Some hand soldered component. Now let's start it up. Oh, I think we have some missing solder from some places. Or do we? Actually, these are kind of soldered from the other side. You can see the solder kind of leaking here. But wasn't it supposed to be like soldered all the way on both sides? I don't know, I guess. The uh, bearing for the rain switch uh, is plastic. But there is some sort of a. I guess there is some sort of a plating on the contact points of that rain switch, I guess. Maybe this is. Uh, I don't know what this is. Couldn't be gold, shouldn't be gold. Something else, nickel maybe. Now there are, oh, look at those beefy diodes. And these resistors, I forgot their names. There are an awful amount of trimmers in here. See the trimmers? The cap, the AC, the DC, the ampere. You can adjust all of them from here. Acetons. They actually says they actually said cap. They had no other way of representing it. Input protection, the fuse, the range selector switch, the uh, the Stutkis crystal. What frequency does it run at? It says three B three nine 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 D B three point. 999D. Why not 4? Why not 4? Just the battery uses two of your regular 1.5 volt, you know, alkaline or whatever. Anything you use, dry cell. Here's a huge current shunt, not that huge, but not, not cheap, I guess. It, this, this thing is not... That thing looks good, I guess. Current shunt. And there are a lot of screws holding down this main board, you see. Lots and lots of screws. And some of the screws are even, you know, kind of damaging the main board, as you can see. How do I know that? I'll show you in a minute. If you could see, this screw is like holding the board down too tightly. See? That glitch. 
reflection means that surface is definitely not flat. Yeah.